I thought you said you were gonna build a frame for this. Uh, I'm in the process of working on it. You remember that. you bragged about how you got an A in wood shop, how yeah. you're gonna frame all the art? Oh, the, the splinters can be dangerous. I try to avoid splinters at all costs. Fire. What's going on, Coyote Pack? And welcome to another episode of Base Camp, but something's missing. Mario, we're starting! Wait. You know what? Mario's on vacation right now. Oh, that's right. He's back down at that. home in Homestead, Florida, probably searching for crocodiles and snakes. But it is a well-deserved vacation because Mario has been on back to back to back to back to back trips for over a year. He's gone a year without taking vacation, so it's well-deserved. Yeah. yeah, definitely due for Mario to get out there and have some him time. That's right. Every location Mario is on working hard. Now that we've got a little bit of downtime in the office, we figured, hey, Mario, Go do what you do when we're out filming and just yeah. look for animals. But base camp must go on. It must go on. But that's perfect because today we're actually featuring an episode that Mario actually wasn't even a part of. That's so right. It made sense of it. Only a few videos in the right. history of the Brave Wilderness channel Mario wasn't present mm -hmm. for. This being one of them. This is one of and them. And we thought with all the aquatic news lately with Blue Wilderness, uh, why not take a look back at uh, Beyond the Tide? That's right. This will be our first Beyond the Tide episode that we have featured on base camp. But before we get into the episode first, we have to look at some Coyote Pack fan art. This is becoming my favorite part of base camp. Looking at all this awesome art. Well, what's crazy is that the more we request the Coyote Pack to send in fan art, the more they send and the better it is getting. Now, these pieces of art are from Tristan. Check oh, that wow. one out there. Nice. And then check that. out this. Oh, this is the same artist. Same artist. Wow, this Tristan is... has some range. Seriously, Look at that. right? Look at that spotted Aina. This is amazing. Tristan, we may have to start hiring you to do illustrations in uh, some of the Brave Adventures books. Now, Tristan's favorite animal is the spotted hyena and Tristan wants to one day work on a wildlife sanctuary to help save spotted hyenas. And as you know, the best place to do that is probably South Africa. So Tristan, good luck taking care of spotted hyenas. This one's definitely gonna end up on the wall. That, that's frame worthy, camp. that's Absolutely. frame worthy. Now next we have this oh, little ditty. Wow, there's from, a lot of animals on there. This is from Diana and Diana has taken particular attention to the animals we have featured on the Brave Wilderness channel, including Wilson, right up there. Man, there's so many on there. We can't even name them, but pick your favorite. Which one's your favorite uh, on there? I would say the Wolverine. Check out the Wolverine right there. Wolverine? Yeah, how about you? I'm gonna go with the Pine Martin. Okay. Up here in the corner. Super cute. Also a member of the Mustelid family. Uh, Diana, thank you so much for sending this in. And in case you guys wanted to know, Diana's spirit animal is the Black Panther. She wrote that on the back here. Okay, now last but not least is this piece of artwork that I've been saving oh. until today. Now this is from the Lewis family. They actually gave us this piece of artwork when we were on the East Coast tour way back in September. Check that out. So good. Now why have I chosen to select this picture of me holding the giant black sea hare? Because today we're going to feature the video with the giant black sea hare from Beyond the Tide. You gave it away. Well, you can tell Usu from the picture. Usually it's like a cliffhanger moment until we yeah, watch. No, but the, the <laughs> art is so cool. And this is actually the thumbnail from that video. Yeah, it is really good. I mean, I thought you said you were going to build a frame for this. Uh, I'm in the process of working on it. You remember that. you bragged about how you got an A in wood shop, how yeah. you're going to frame all the art? Well, the, the splinters can be dangerous. I try to avoid splinters at all costs. But yes, I will eventually build a frame for this and all of the artwork. Kind of working myself you in heard the corner him. with you that. You heard him. There. We want to see some frames. Maybe we'll do an episode of Howling with the Pack where Coyote does woodworking shop or something like that. Now, if you guys are ready, I know Mark's ready. Let's head back to the West Coast and dive in to get up close with the giant black sea hare. Let's do it. I haven't seen this one in a while. Yeah, me neither. It just has 21 million views at this point. Really? Yeah. Wow. See, what's cool about this is actually, I didn't even find the Black Sea here. It's found by Aaron, Aaron Sanchez. Who has an amazing YouTube channel. We're gonna talk about that later. Yep. Aaron is our marine specialist when we do any of our episodes with Beyond the Tide. Gosh, is it slimy. That's a cool shot. Yeah, that was, uh, and I love this intro for Beyond the Tide. The Beyond the Tide intro is a little bit more elaborate than the Dragon Tales, Coyote's Backyard, or Breaking Trail. And this is where we really started to get, you know, uh, Super animated with the yeah, intros. The, the octopus arms coming down. Yeah, I love super that. Super cool. If there's one ecosystem on the planet that is constantly This is actually changing, one of the first episodes where we started using those gimbals yeah, to get shots. Yeah, get that smooth pan. 
Yeah, one of your specialty pro, shots. Pro specialty shot. What's cool about the West Coast is you don't realize how diverse the ecosystem is along the coastline. Some areas are just these pristine beaches with no rocks, but once you get past the beaches and into the rocky areas, there's just so much wildlife to be found. Yeah. Striped shore crab. This is where I actually I edited this video, and this is where I was really into doing the multiple shots within a screen to show passage of time and all the exploring we would do because we explore quite a bit before we find anything. Everything here is rocky. And this is one of the original Beyond the Tide episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have filmed a couple of these tide pulling videos as a breaking trail with the pricklebacks, with Aaron actually to test it out. But once we realized like how much all of you like them, we were like, we got to make a whole series yeah. about these special creatures. Yeah, I would say this is considered, you know, we don't really break things down into seasons, but if you were to break something down into seasons, this was certainly the first season of Beyond the Tide. Yeah. This episode came out in the fall of 2016, I believe. But sometimes a wildlife expert joins us. Oh, God, there you go. Here's species. Aaron. They can be very difficult to find. Hey, Aaron, by the way. How you doing, bud? I'm back out with Ty Hopefully he's watching us. Yeah. Sanchez, who has been exploring these Southern California pools. Yeah, this is like life. Aaron's playground right here. Yeah. Aaron knows to everywhere to search when it comes to the West Coast Aaron, for so marine creatures. That's right. And he, takes, he takes great photos too. He does. Amazing photographer. Photography and his cinematography are, are, are very excellent. His his YouTube channel, Waterbod, mm -hmm. uh, is got some really cool sort yeah. of planet Earth type footage of these creatures. I love the way that he narrates the stuff that he does. He seems like a shy guy on camera, but when you get him in person, you're out there in the field. He's uh, he's he's a blast. Very very knowledgeable. Yeah. He knows everything about these environments, and that's. Always helpful when you know we're rookies, yeah. first timers. He's able to sort of help us navigate around, warn us about where the slippery spots are. In fact, that's probably one of the things that was most difficult about starting the series was learning how to walk in this environment. Mm -hmm. Not only, as you can see here, is it super jagged and awkward to, to walk over the rocks, but it's also super slick. And if you fall down, I mean, you, you can be in big trouble real fast. Oh yeah, all those rocks are sharp. So you slip and fall and you slam your hand down. I mean, you may be getting a cut so deep that you're gonna need stitches at that point. So it's, it is, it's a really treacherous environment to explore. And I know when you know, juggling cameras with the water and everything around, I remember this specific shoot, I was pretty uh, nervous going walking around, falling you and just really taking my time. It's definitely well, it's here. interesting about this episode, you'll notice how gloomy and overcast it is. And you, mm -hmm. when you think of California, you think, you know, sunshine, palm yeah. trees. Um, but we just so happened to be out on a day that was very overcast, sort of that June gloom. I believe we shot this in June. June of 2016 is when yeah. this was filmed. And generally, you're filming earlier in the day, too. Mm -hmm. So they have that marine layer. Now, let's, well, let's back up a little bit. We're, we're, we're talking about the production. We missed the whole reveal. Of the animal. Well, what's cool about this is, is sometimes during the right season for these slugs, when they're during breeding season, you can find them anywhere. But we were past the breeding season, mm -hmm. and this was actually the only one of these slugs we found this day, despite the fact that they're relatively common. Right. Let's pause there for a second. We were finding a lot of the smaller slugs, mm -hmm. the brown sea here. Seniors. You know, we'd seen many, many of those, and actually filmed a, another video on them. But Aaron kept telling us about the giant black sea here and how impressive it was, and we're like, yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's see if it is impressive or not, if we ever find one. And then sure enough, I think this was like our second to last day of filming on this trip, and then here we go. Yep. Black Sea here. Look at that thing. It's it huge. That's cool, so most people don't realize is that I would say about 98% of the time, I'm the one that, that finds the animals, but occasionally it, it does happen where the crew spots something. For mm -hmm. example, when you found the velvet worm in Costa Rica, right. that's a great example. Um, or in this instance where Aaron actually was the one that spotted the giant black sea here and then called me over and I rush into the scene and quickly, you know, asked his permission to make sure I could pick it up. And he said this is one of the largest specimens he's actually ever found. It, I mean, you look at it, it doesn't look like something you should just go and pick up. I mean, I wouldn't actually, most of the time you probably wouldn't even notice that there's an animal there. No. That's what's crazy about it. Well, you know, this is interesting too because of where it was located. There wasn't a lot of sand or like pebbles and rocks around it because no. we had seen many of these after filming this video and they a lot of times get covered by things. So mm -hmm. they, they really blend in well to the environment They're for really being new. such a large slug. Mm -hmm. It looks like a ball of tar or something or yeah. a rock under the water. Oh, man. 
I like how they have like the little rabbit yeah. ear looking appendages, which is why they get their name Hare. Yep, hence the name Sea Hare. Kind of looks like a rabbit of some sort, a much slimier rabbit than you would imagine. And they have those front feelers. And they're heavy. They are. That I would say that was probably about five to seven pounds in weight. Yeah. Solid creature, very solid. So the, 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 like the gills. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I was just over there talking to Mark. I literally said, I'm really I remember, This is one of those videos, um, you know, because we shot it near where a lot of people live, you know, in California. Right. And a lot of people wrote in and said, those live right by us? Those, mm -hmm. those live where I go to the beach? And you're like, yeah, they, they do. It's funny how, like, something like that can live so close to, uh, you know, urban centers and then people have no idea it exists. Right. And what's interesting about this time of day when we shot this too in this location is you're right, it is very close to civilization. I mean, their, their house is actually on the backside of where we were filming, but you'll notice all the exposed rock because this is at low tide. So a lot of these animals become maroon in these slivers of water, like these sliver shaped pockets of water. So, you know, we had found a brown sea here just a few minutes earlier. So Aaron was able to quickly run over, grab that brown sea here. So it was cool to put both of them side by side. So you can see a size difference between these two slugs. Even the Brown sea here is something that I would consider to be a large slug. Yeah, I mean, we've seen other sea slugs elsewhere, and, you know, a lot of times they're, they're very small. Uh, the black sea here is, that's a question, is the black sea here the largest sea slug? Yes, I believe it is the largest sea slug species in the world. And the specimen we found, like I said, Aaron said was, I think, either the second or third largest specimen he'd ever seen. And he said the biggest one that he ever found was actually twice the size. Whoa. Yeah, so we're talking... That's a monster. Now, I've seen other black sea hares after the fact. And remember, we went back and we found some black sea hares. We brought them on Conan O'Brien's late right. night show. Um, they weren't nearly this big, but they're still, I mean, any black sea hare of this size is, is a, and it's an admirable creature. They're impressive. And most people have never seen one of these creatures. So you show somebody, I think, I think actually when you handed it to Jeff Goldblum, he was like, whoa, like, oh, yeah. I didn't know he was going to hold this slug. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Can anyway? No, they're not. Okay, so I'm in no danger right now. So they don't bite, they're not toxic, they're just slimy. They are super slimy. They are slimy. Yeah, your arm is like covered in slime afterwards. But that is an important point to note. Now, we never encourage people to go out there and actually pick up animals on their own. But if you are curious and you head out there into the tide pools and you see one of these creatures, it's definitely not something to be afraid of. And handling them is, is completely safe as long as you place them right back down into the water after admire it for a few minutes. And the black sea hairs don't ink like the brown they do not. sea hair. So, you know, you don't get quite is messy. No. Other than the slime. The slime is incredibly sticky, but you're not going to get inked. I didn't believe it. This is absolutely amazing. And I never thought that this video was going to be as successful as it became. I mean, when we put out this video, it was like, oh, cool, a, a giant black sea here. We were more focused on the brown ones because they ink, and we thought that was such a cooler feature, which that episode did really fantastically as well. Mm -hmm. um, but in this instance, I mean, the Black Sea here, I mean, there were news articles written about it. I think people were just so blown away with the fact that, wait a minute, this is a creature that lives right here in the United States, right on the coast? It was definitely this video um, being released that made us aware that like, oh, people really like sea creatures. Mm -hmm. We've got to do a lot more of these Beyond the Tides, yep. which uh, actually we've got a trip coming up soon. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to do some more Beyond the Tides. So. Right. Waterbodymedia.com. There, yeah, guys, check out Aaron's yeah. Instagram. So we put, and put a link page. to his YouTube channel right here. Yeah. You guys want to check it out? Subscribe to Aaron. Give Aaron a subscribe. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll have to go back and visit this video with the uh, oh. sea snake. Possibly the most dangerous animal you've ever held. People often ask, what's the most dangerous animal you've ever held? It is that sea snake right there. But we won't dive too much into that now. We got to yeah. save it for that episode. Well, that's pretty cool, revisiting the giant black sea hare. And you know what's crazy is that after this video came out, it got a lot of media attention. There were a lot of articles written. Like I said, we brought the sea hares on. You got on, on your first online. late night show. Got on a late night show because of the, the black sea hares. But I experienced a lot of people now tagging either hashtag Brave Wilderness or at Brave Wilderness or at Coyote Peterson of kids out on the West Coast shores once they find these slugs holding them up for a photo. Well, now they know they're there. They're, they, they know they're there and they know that they're safe. But again, guys, be very careful in these environments because they can be treacherous. And certainly if you're going to handle one of these animals, only do it for a few minutes and then place it right back into the environment.
I think that pretty much wraps up another great Base Camp episode, but I think revisiting some more Beyond the Tide episodes is certainly in store. We'll definitely come back to the Yellow Belly Sea Snake, um, maybe the Brown Sea Hare. Ooh, how about the octopus? The octopus ones are great. We've done a couple of octopus episodes at this point, so yeah. certainly the octopus, but as we're getting into the phase of the Blue Wilderness series releasing, we'll revisit some more of the Beyond the Tide episodes, and then of course we'll revisit some more stings before we <clears throat> get to the Executioner Wasp. Like, so, do you need to tease it anymore? Everybody, uh, like every, every uh, other question I read these days, when's the Executioner Wasp gonna happen? Well, they're gonna write in the comments section below, so I'll just remind everybody that yes, the Executioner Wasp has been filmed and it comes out this holiday season. Stay tuned, it's definitely coming. But I think at this point, it's time for an outro so that uh, we can get on to the next thing. Sound yeah. good? I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Mark Vins. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. Talk about one slimy slug. The Black Sea Hare is one of the most bizarre creatures we ever featured on the Brave Wilderness channel. But did you see the episode about its smaller, ink-shooting cousin, the Brown Sea Hare? If not, make sure to go back and check it out. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.